and my life has been strained. But in spite of everything I've been through, I still gotta say. He's good. Well, you know, we've been talking about um, there were seven ways and not to give place to the devil. And so many times we give place to the devil and don't even realize it. Before we was talking about the mind, and then we last, the week before that, as we were talking about the eyes, how eyes are very deceiving. You can see things and you think you see something, you don't see it. And, you know, how many times people have been wrong identity, thinking they, it was a person, it wasn't that person. There's people death that people don't got killed because of wrong identity. They thought that was the person they shot and killed them or whatever. And, you know, it, it's very important that you don't give place to the devil with no parts of our bodies. Amen? So today we're going to be talking about mouth. Give no place with your mouth. And how many of you know Proverbs 18, you get your Bible. Can you turn there for me, please? Now go to James first. I want to go to the New Testament and then move over to the old. James 3, turn there to James. Amen. My brother, be not many mass know that we shall receive the greater condemnation. In other words, don't be giving something out your mouth that you ain't living. Don't be teaching somebody else something you ain't living it. Because you're going to have the, the worst going to come back upon you. For in many things we offend on, and any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and able to also bribe the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth, that they may obey us, and return about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which do they be so great, are driven a fierce wind, yet are they turned about with a small hell, whatsoever the governor listed. Even so, verse 5. Even, even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire can do. The tongue is a what? Fire. fire. <laughs> Y'all ain't getting what I'm saying. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body. How many of you know your mouth can mess up your whole body? You can be looking good, smelling good, got a lot going with you, but when you open up your mouth, it can defile your whole body. <laughs> it can mess you up. Your mouth, and what come out your mouth can just mess up your whole appearance. And I've seen it happen to me. I, it happened to me. I mean, I was the greatest cursor going in New, New Jersey. And I, had, and I often think about this guy, Raymond Walker, said to me, he said, Barb, you're a beautiful lady. I said, well, thank you, Raymond. I was at the acid part, doing my, uh, cleaning my jewelry. And um, he said, until you open your mouth, you're the ugliest woman around. And I turned around and I cussed him out some more. <laughs> but see, out of ignorance, when you don't have Jesus, you do a lot of crazy stuff. We all done did it. I don't act like I'm the only one here. <laughs> we all done told somebody a piece of mind. You know, ain't had nothing to give them, but we did, you know. But anyway, okay, oh uh, Patty, and, and uh, good to see y'all back. You made it back say, good. I was praying for you all. Turn your Bibles to James, the third chapter. I was reading there, and um, I'm reading about the day we talk about giving no place to the devil with our mouth and uh, how we opened up and allowed the enemy to come into our lives by the things and the words we say. Amen? So here I'm going to say here, I'm going to go up to verse Verse 5, even so the tongue of the little man may boast great things, but how great a little fire kinder. The tongue is a fire and a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. That is, defile the whole body and set on fire the course of nature. And it is set on hell fire. You would be surprised how so many things, a lot of people got in trouble by their mouth. Some things, you know, that's why it's good to have an ear to hear. Because before you open up your mouth, this is teaching now. Before you open your mouth and say something, you should listen. And God will tell you whether to say or not to say. Have you went to say something and something just seemed like came over you and said, don't say nothing? Amen. See, God wants, he just want to, just shut your mouth and listen. You're, he don't want you to fight some battles. See, sometimes we go, oh, let me tell you, I know about that. Sometimes God just wants you to listen. And let him do what he has to do. Because sometimes, even with our children, our family, we think because we know something, we can do something. God don't want you to be no police from a police man. Just shut your mouth and listen. Amen. That's why James 1, 19 said, be swift to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Amen. See, while you're talking, I said this Tuesday night in Bible study, while someone talking to you, I have people call me on the phone, and before I, I listen, and while they talk to me, I tune into Jesus. I said, now what do you want me to say to them? 
And when I open up my mouth, the advice, advice that I give them is from God. It ain't my flesh. Because sometimes I may want to tell them, yeah, girl, just go ahead on about your business, whatever. But I don't let my flesh get there. I tune into him so he can use my mouth to give them the right advice. But if you're going to try to talk while somebody else is talking, you're going to miss it. Two people talking at the same time going to miss it. <laughs> well, I know it's good teaching. Y'all looking at me crazy, but it's all right. Okay, the tongue is, that's what it says in verse 6. Verse 7, so every kind of beast and birds and servants of things in the sea is tame and has been tamed by mankind. Man can tame all these wild. You go to circles. They got them animals doing all kinds of tricks and stuff. They can tame them. But the tongue can no man tame. Verse 8, the tongue can no man tame. It's unruly, even full of deadly poison. Things come out of our mouth can be so poison. Because, see, from the heart, you don't build up stuff in your heart. Come on now. So from the abundance of the heart, Matthew 12, 34, say from the abundance of the heart, your mouth speak. So if you got something in your heart against someone, and they say, oh, yeah, well, what, what do you want? Yeah, uh, but it's in your heart against them. So I can tell how people feel towards me, the way they act towards me. Uh, you know what they think, and so they speak it out their mouth. Oh, y'all, two amens. Thank you, anyway. <laughs> Verse 9 said, where we bless we God, even the Father, and therefore curse we men, which are made out of the descendant to a God. Out of the same I perceive blessing and cursing. My brother, these things are not so be. You shouldn't be speaking one word. Oh, praise the Lord. This is what happened. We all Christians. One day I was in, and this lady, she forever praising God. So it kind of shocked me when I got outside. She was telling somebody, oh, I mean, really, about somebody that hit her car, bumped it just a little bit in the back. And I said to myself, she conducted herself in church. Woo, hallelujah, praise God, yeah. And I've been telling this man all about he just touched her back of her car just a little bit. Then he all the touch. I say, and then I went back to James. It says here. Therefore we bless even God the Father, and that with cuss we miss, which are made of the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth receive blessing. Out of your same mouth come cursing. My brother, these things are not so big. We need to be conscious how we talk to people about circumstances of life, we should be very conscious. Your mouth, Proverbs 18, 21, and we're going to get that turned in. Write that down. I'm going to go into Proverbs a little bit here now, okay? So you can keep it there at Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18. Somebody's phone going off. Probably mine. And they should know I'm in here. Okay, before you go to 18, well, let's go to 18. I'm going to go back to Proverbs 6, but I want to go here. And show you some Proverbs 18, 21. Write it down. Can, Bell, can you get my phone out my bag and just shed it off? Verse, chapter 18, I'm going to go to verse 20. A man's, belly, a, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. When you give out good advice and say nice things, it makes you feel good inside. Now, really, it does. When you can help somebody, encourage someone, uh, be there for someone, you know, to edify them, they low, they feeling low, and you can say, by the time you get finished talking to them, not only they feel good, but you feel good. Oh, y'all better hear me. It fulfills you to be a blessing to somebody. Your mouth can bless somebody. You know, think about God. The Bible says also, do unto others you want them to do to you. So I'm going to treat you right because I will never know when the day going to come. I'll be before the day is over. I may need somebody. It may not be you, but somebody to come my way and help me. It don't have to be the same person you give it to because God keeps records of everything we do. He sees and knows everything that we do. So when it's time for you to get what you just gave out, somebody he's going to put in your past to bless you. And you'd be like, wow, that is so funny. I remember I helped someone. Let me show you how, how this goes. The other day I was going, and I gave this lady a way that she wanted to turn in. So I just stopped. Everybody just wouldn't let her go. It was a lot of heavy traffic. And I just stopped and let her go. And by the time I did, she was like, thank you, thank you. She was waving, blowing her home, thank you. Because nobody would let her go. So I just made the perfect, I'm going to let her go through. Let her go. Because of the heavy traffic on Morris Avenue. I just let her go. Don't you know it wasn't even an hour later. I needed to go past. And God back to my memory, he said, see, by you letting that lady go, I had this man to let you go. Just some small thing. It ain't got to be big. Just small stuff you do for somebody, you know? Okay, let's go ahead. I'm doing we read 20. Verse 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. 
Whatever you love to speak on, you're going to eat that fruit. You speak negative, you're going to eat that fruit of negative speaking. Death and life, you know, when Jesus, the world was made by words. Turn to Genesis. Let me show you how God made the world, how the world came, came and existed. And if he did, he gave us power. Those that have Christ inside them, you have the same power. You have the same power. He gave you power to speak over anything you want to speak over, and you should have it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and the earth was without void and the, without form and void and darkness was up on this first chapter, first chapter of Genesis. And the face of the it was deep, and the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water. And God said, "Let God said, He didn't take His hand. He said, "Let there be light," and there was light. Now, if He could say it, the same Jesus in us gave us power. We can say whatever. Now, I'm going to show you what else it says. And God saw that the light was good, and, he did, did, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let divide the waters from the, from the waters. Now, you know, God got a way of doing everything. He's beautiful. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were upon the firmament from the waters which was above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the water. Now he said, all he's saying, he ain't doing nothing with his hand. You don't see no way he did nothing with his hand. He spoke it. As you read this, you can go on. It's a whole lot here, but I'm not going to go and read the first chapter. Everything he said, let it, that be, he said and it was. Let it be, and it was. Now he said he gave us the same power. Death and life is in your tongue. Turn to Mark 11. Let me show you where, how it means so much power there. I'm skipping around as God gave it to me, so I hope you don't mind. This is how God giving it to me, so I'm giving it to you. Now, what I wrote on this page here, I'm skipping around some of the things that ain't right here. Okay. Chapter 11 of Mark. You get to say amen. Okay. Verse 20, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, it's Jesus speaking here. If your Bible have red in it, anywhere there's red, it's Jesus. Anywhere in your Bible with red writing, that's Jesus speaking. Verse 23 is Jesus speaking. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he shall, which he say shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he said. It's not what I say or you say, or to, uh, what people say about us, it's what you say. Whatever you say, that's why I don't care what people say. I know what I'm saying to God. I know what I'm believing God for, and I ain't doubting in my heart. I don't have to go around and say, oh, well, he said it ain't going to be, or he said, or she said. I'm believing God for what I say. Because he said, whatever I say, I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it. It may not come when I want it, but he's going to be on time. Amen. God's word in, in, in Isaiah 55, verse 7, say, God's word will not return back to him. Whatever he say, and he's using your mouth to say, he's going to make it happen. It's going to come to pass. It's going to happen. It don't matter when. Just, just trust him. Have faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. Just know it don't, it don't care what it looks like. Oh, I didn't believe I would do this and do that, but I done did a lot. You done did a lot. You don't come a long way. It's because there's some things of purpose in your heart. And you didn't even realize you were saying it maybe to, your, to someone in your family or whatever. And one day I'm going to have this one day. And look, God made it happen because you said it. Amen. And you believed that God was going to do it. You, went, you worked a little bit. You did something. But you did it and you got it. <laughs> whatever you say to your mouth to beat out, remove, and cast into the sea. Whatever you say and don't doubt in your heart, you shall. And believe that you have it, you shall have it. Whatever you say. Don't go by what people say over you. It's what you say. It's your faith. We walk by faith. Have faith in God, not in man. Don't put your trust in that because that ain't going to never work. Amen? Well, let's move on. Y'all happy here? Yeah. I ain't getting no amens here. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say it anyway. I'm going to have what I say. Mm -hmm. You're going to have what you say too, whether it's negative or positive. <laughs> Turn to, uh, prove, go back to Proverbs 10. Uh, I enjoy this because I, I really feel that we talk about a lot of things, but people need to be more um, Proverbs. Before I go to, go to Proverbs 6, I want to show you something what God has shown me here. 
Okay. Proverbs 6. I know I'm jumping around because they keep coming to me. If verse 1, I'm, say amen. I ain't going to rush y'all. I'm going to take, take my time because this is very important. Amen. amen. You have it? Amen. You still looking? <laughs> verse 1, chapter 6. My son, if thou be sure for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of your mouth. Thou are taken with the words of thy mouth. I'm going to tell you why God is saying this here. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. Even thou art come into the hand of thy friend. Go home thyself and make sure, make sure by thy friend. Let not sleep to thy eyes, nor slumber to thy eyelids. What is sin? Don't ever sign your name. Be a, a co-signer. If you have an amplifier, you break it down. Anytime you put your name and say you're going to do something to pay, they're going to hold you accountable for that bill. I had, I had a sign for my son-in-law. He died, and I still had to pay the bill. <laughs> and when I read Proverbs 6, you are snared by the word of your own mouth. If you co-sign for someone and trying to help them, they don't pay that bill, you still going to have to pay it. It's a verse in Proverbs that they'll come and take your bed from under you. They'll come and take whatever they can. There are people don't sign, they lost their house. Things they lost because they signed their signature on it as a co-signer. And you'll be the one winding up with it. So go to that friend before you do it and say, you know what, I would love to do it, but I can't. Because you better know who you're signing for. And then sometimes you don't even know that. Because he showed that on me, and I had to finish paying that car note. Amen. Amen. I tried to get, I said, I thought the man dead would pay me. And when he did, he said, no, not this one. You got to pay it. So I had to pay it. Proverbs <laughs> Proverb 10. Let's move on to Proverbs 10. Amen. Amen. So this is good teaching because we, we need to know these things. This is what God said. Starting at verse 11, chapter 10 of Proverbs. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. But the violent covers the mouth of the wicked. That's why you need to know who you're hanging out with. God, you can hang out with wrong people and before you know you're doing things and talking the same way. That's why I said corrupt communication spoil good manners. You ever been around some people and you, you find yourself into their conversation? It tells you in Corinthians. You can be around some people and you, you don't, you know, you, know, you got to watch who you hang out with because you start acting like them. And you start talking some talk that you know after you leave me, you say, boy, I was sure I kind of got involved with that conversation. You ever been there? Now, come on, I ain't like you ain't been. I've been there, all of us been there. But then when I leave from out there, I'll be like, oh, my God, I got I should, I, I, God, I could have used you in this here. But I, I was trapped by just talking with him. Then you realize, you know, I'm all into it. Had you stir strife, but love cover all sins. And the lips of him that has understanding, wisdom is found. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. That's why it's good to get the wisdom of God. Know when to speak and when not to speak. You know, you can be in the midst of people and talking all kinds of stuff, but you don't have to go in that conversation. You know what I'm saying? In the lips of him, in the lips of him that has understanding, wisdom is found by the rod. I read that. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Anybody always talking a bunch of stuff, they they, they dead, doomed to come. Because it's in their heart. They stirring up stuff. You got people that love to keep trouble. They're troublemakers, you know. Always got something going. Get away from them people. Because you'll find yourself being just like them. Because you're going to call them in their conversation just like they are. If they're talking about somebody all the time and bringing somebody down, they never lifting up nobody, ain't never got nothing nice to say, then you don't need to hang out with them. If you're around them, it's a way to bring God in on the scene. It's a way to have, you can change that conversation. You can say, yeah, you know why I can say that? Because I got this when I was a little girl, like, in, in Alabama. And I had a Sunday school teacher, and she gave this word, and I never forgot it. I must have been seven, eight years old, and she was talking about a dog had died, and they put the dog on the side of the road, and the dog was laying there dead, and everybody came out, ooh, he stinks, and ooh, he, ooh he's mingling. And they had, everybody had something bad to say. And Jesus came by and looked, and he said, oh, he do have pretty white teeth. So there's always a way you can put something good in a bad conversation. And I never, ever forgot that. It stayed with me. There's good in everybody. There's something good you can say instead of joining in the conversation with somebody talking evil. You be the better person. 
You don't be the one like them. You bring in something good to say. And you know what they're telling me? I said, yeah, you're right. Once you change that conversation, it'll be changed. But you'll be the better one. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is good. Woo! Let's move on. Okay. Let me see over here. Verse uh, the mouth, verse 31, the same chapter. The mouth of the just be brings forth wisdom, but the foul tongue shall be cut off. The lips of the righteous no acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speak foul forwardness. That's what I'm talking about right here. It's so important that you learn and ask God to bride your tongue. Isaiah said, God, take the coals off the altar and put it on my lips because I'm around unclean people and I'm subject to speak like them. It's really a spirit. That spirit will draw you right in to be in that little circle. And you don't even really, it'd be a trick. See, the devil's sneaking and conning. He know how to ease you right into something that you shouldn't be into. That's why you need to ask God, take the coals off the altar. God, take them off the altar and put on these lips because I'm around unclean people. Don't let me speak like them. Don't let me act like them. Don't, I'm your child. Let me represent you. And if you sit there and don't have no joy in a conversation, and then they'll be like, you ain't got nothing to say about that? No, because, you know, I see things a little different. Then you'll be able to express how you feel. And that'll change that whole thing. Amen? Amen. Let's move on for time's sake. Proverbs 13. Go there. Oh, wow. And I'm going to read verse 2. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressor shall eat valor. He that keep his mouth keep his life, but he that open wide his lips shall have destruction. <laughs> it's bad when a person just know everything and not talk to everybody. Now, I know, I know. You don't know nothing. Because when you know so much, it's just like Isaiah. That's how the devil was kicked out of heaven because he, I, I sit on high. I can do this. I can do that. You got to watch those people with that I because they bring in glory to the self, okay? And get away from it. He that keep it his mouth, keep it his life. But he that open wide his lips shall have what? Destruction. Amen? There's a lot more in here I could go on, but let's move on, okay? Let's move to Proverbs 14, verse 3. He that walketh the upright, he fear the Lord, but he that perverse in his way despise him. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. When you're wise, you know how to be quiet. You don't have to be seen or heard. Uh, that person that sit there observing and taking in, like I was telling you all, what happened with me when I go and I, when I eat on Sunday nights with pastors, you have guest speakers. I've learned to sit. He sit on one end, I sit on the other end. But what I've learned to do um, is keep my mouth shut. I'm there not to voice my opinion. I don't know, many of you remember Janice Christ came here for her first time, and she was like, oh, my God, look at this place. Oh, I didn't believe she had all this here. Oh, I eat with her on Sunday night when I go in the orange, and oh, my God, oh, my God, this is terrible. This is really nice. Oh, not terrible. This is really nice. And she sit and eat, and she never opened her mouth. You know why? Because I'm not there to voice my opinion. I'm there to learn. Because, see, when he brings guest speakers in and people that's, a little bit up there, whatever. I don't think they're better than me, but I ain't there to voice my opinion. Only time I open my mouth, if pastor say, Barbara, Pastor Barbara, what you got to say about that? In whatever conversation, I voice my opinion. But I don't just blab off my mouth trying to let people know what I know. And sometimes they be saying things I could get involved in, but I don't. So I learned to just listen. I learn a lot by listening. Yeah. I learn a lot by just sitting there listening. I ain't there to voice my opinion. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. When you keep your mouth set, God can preserve you. He'll keep you. And when it's time for you to open your mouth, he'll, wind you to, he'll allow you to open it. Amen? amen? Let's move on. Amen, amen. Proverbs 14 and 3. Let's look at um, Proverbs 15, 1 and 2. <clears throat> Verse 1 says, A soft answer turn away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. How many of you know if somebody come at you real harsh, you harsh back at them? <laughs> but it shouldn't be like that. How are you doing this here for? Well, what you asking me for? <laughs> you know. <laughs> but you shouldn't do that. Being a child of God, you should give a soft answer. I have people come at me and I'd be like, well, I'm so sorry. I didn't know that was going like that. Please forgive me. The Bible says soft answer, turn away that wrath that's on that person. But when you grieve its words and stir back at them, it stir up what? Anger. It make that person more angry. And that's the devil. You know, Satan likes to get two people fighting each other. Somebody got to use it the way God says it. 
And by us being a child of God and God teaching us what to do with our mouth, believe me, you're going to be tested somewhere down the road. Maybe the day of tomorrow, the devil's going to test you just to see how much you got, how you can bribe that tongue. You ain't got to argue with everybody to argue at you. Learn to keep your mouth shut. They can't argue by themselves. Or either you say something, say it with a nice, soft answer. Say, you know what, I'm sorry. If I made a mistake, I'm wrong. And the Bible says in Corinthians, sometimes we give up the right for the wrong to keep peace. There's some things I know I was right, but I'd rather say, okay, you was right, I'm wrong, I'm okay. Just keep peace. I ain't about all this stirring up stuff, keep on arguing over something. That don't make no sense, right? Amen? Amen. Verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are, are in every place. Now look, God eyes on every place. That's verse, uh, what, three. The eyes of the law in every place beholding the evil and the good. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness at their end is a breach in the spirit. <laughs> the lips of the wise despise knowledge, but the heart of the foolish does not so. Foolish people don't want to hear what's right. They don't. Most times you're just wasting your time. It's best to go away and pray for them. Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you, and thank you for tuning in to this week's broadcast. What an awesome word from the woman of God. I know that word was meant for you, just as that word was meant for me. I know things may seem hard in your life right now, and it seems like there's no way out, but I'm here to tell you today that there is a way, and that way is Jesus. So if today's word really moved you and God is tugging at your heart, I ask that you repeat this simple prayer with me. Say, Father, forgive me for all my sins. Come into my life and live in me and help me to live for you. Say, Father, your son Jesus, he died, but you rose him from the dead. Father God, I accept, make it personal, I accept your son Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior to serve him all the days of my life. And have you said that simple prayer Jesus Christ is a spirit and he's coming to your heart. Your life will begin to change. Maybe not immediately and maybe not overnight, but you will begin to see a change. And if you or someone that you know are in need of prayer, the number is on the screen. And if you're ever in our area, we invite you to come and fellowship with us. And if you really enjoyed this broadcast and you would like to see it continue, we ask that you give a small donation. Just remember, a little goes a long way, and you are definitely sowing on good ground. So as always, we thank you, we love you, God loves you, and be blessed. Mm -hmm.